Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to transform yourself into a golden statue. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, smash that small subscribe button at the lower right corner. Also, if my tutorials have helped you learn or improve in Photoshop, I'd like to ask you to support my channel by becoming a channel member or by becoming a patron on Patreon. Click the Join or Sponsor button below the video or the Patreon card at the upper right. If you want to use the same background that I'm using, I provided its link in my video's description below or in my project files. Open a well-focused, high-resolution photo of someone that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. We'll drag it onto the background. If your Move tool isn't active, press V on your keyboard. Drag it onto the tab of the background, and without releasing your mouse or pen, press and hold Shift, drag it down, and release. Pressing Shift kept it centered over the background. To resize it, open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. If you want to reposition it, just drag your subject. Then, click the check mark at the top, or press Enter or Return twice. We'll separate our subject from its background by making a selection around our subject. There are many ways to do this, and I covered them all in prior tutorials. In this case, since the background is a solid color, white, I'll use the Magic Wand tool. If you're using this tool as well, make its tolerance 10 pixels, and make sure Contiguous is checked. Contiguous will prevent the inside of your subject from being selected. Click on the background to make a selection of it, and invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Press Q to see it as a quick mask. If you have areas outside the quick mask, we need to fill them in. Before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they are not black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. You can fill the empty areas outside your subject in a variety of ways. However, for this example, I'll use the Paint Bucket tool. I'll click on each side twice to ensure that it's filling the areas completely. Revert the Quick Mask back into a selection by pressing Q again. Go to Select. If you're using version 2015.5 or later, you can either click Select and Mask or Shift-click it to open Refine Edge. If you're using an earlier version, click Refine Edge. I did in-depth tutorials on both Refine Edge and Select and Mask, so if you'd like to watch them, I provided their links as well. We'll smooth out the edges by dragging the smooth slider to the right approximately this much and checking Decontaminate Colors. This prevents color fringing, which is what happens when the background colors leach into our subject. Slide the amount to 100%. Output it as a new layer with Layer Mask. Then click OK. We'll convert our cutout subject into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Black and White. An Adjustment Layer affects all the layers below it, so if you want to restrict it to affect just the one layer beneath it, we need to clip it to that layer. To do this, either click the Clipping Mask icon or press alt Control g on Windows or Option-Command-G on a Mac. You can also go to Layer and create Clipping Mask. There's even a fourth way, which is to hover your cursor between the adjustment layer and the layer beneath it, and press and hold Alt or Option. When you see your cursor change to another icon, left-click. We can target and automatically adjust the brightness and contrast of specific colors of our subject by clicking this icon in the Black and White Properties panel and dragging our cursor over areas you want to add more contrast to. I did an in-depth tutorial of this filter, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided its link as well. 
For example, I'd like to brighten the highlights of her skin a bit, so I'll place my cursor on a highlight and drag it to the right. This slides the colors in the Properties panel associated with the placement of my cursor. Conversely, I'd like to darken her skin's midtones, so I'll place my cursor on a midtone and drag it to the left. We'll smooth out the skin by removing grain in the photo as well as her skin pores. Make the cutout face active and go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. Make the radius 20 pixels and the threshold 20 levels. Go back to Filter and this time click Noise and Dust and Scratches. Make the radius 1 pixel and the threshold 0. Make the top layer active and click the adjustment layer icon. Click Invert and clip it to your subject. Change its blend mode to Difference. Make a copy of the Invert Adjustment layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Then clip it. Shift click your cutout subject to make it active as well and convert all the active layers into one smart object. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Artistic folder and click Plastic Wrap. Make the Highlight Strength 10, the Detail 1, and the Smoothness 15. Convert it into a Smart Object. If you want to brighten your image, click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Clip it and slide the input highlight to the left a bit. Click the adjustment layer icon again and this time click Hue Saturation. Then clip it to the layer. Check Colorize. For its hue, type in 50 and for the saturation, type in 70. Shift click your cutout subject and convert all the highlighted layers into one smart object. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. Check Show More Options to see the highlights and adjustments. Make the shadows amount 60%, the tone 60%, and the radius 30 pixels. The highlights amount is 0, the tone is 50%, and the radius is 30 pixels. Make the adjustments color 100. I'd like to make the black areas of the statue a bit lighter. If you want to do this to your statue as well, double click the thumbnail of the smart object to open its source. Click this Smart Object to open its source and click this Smart Object to open its source. Reduce the opacity of the Invert Copy to 90%. Close its tab and when you see this message, just click Yes to accept the changes. As before, close this tab, click Yes and close the other Smart Object tab. Double-click an empty area of the Smart Object to open its Layer Style window. Click Inner Glow. The color box is white. If it isn't, click it and pick white. The Blend Mode is Color Dodge and the Opacity is 100%. The technique is softer, the source is edge, 
the choke is zero, and the size is 50 pixels. Click Outer Glow and the color box. In the hexadecimal field, type in F F F F 0 3. Then click OK. The blend mode is soft light, the opacity is 100%, and the size is 50 pixels. To remove the glow across the bottom of our gold statue, open your transform tool, and when you see this message, it's just letting us know that the smart filters will be temporarily turned off as we use the transform tool. Just click OK. Enlarge it a bit and press Enter or Return. To slide our statue down, press V to open your Move tool and press the down arrow. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.